Thunderdome boxing talk. All right. Um, you know, when you compare Floyd Mayweather's resume with Manny Pacquiao's resume, you seem to catch a little bit of flack. Uh, when you compare them to, you know, the resumes of fighters from the past, it's almost like unfair, and you'll catch flack. So I figured, how about we compare him to two uh, all-time great fighters from his era, not a Manny Pacquiao, like his contemporaries, who he could have done basically, he could have fought 80% of the same people they fought and more. Um, and of the people we wanted him to fight, a lot of them, these two guys have fought, and the other ones he obviously didn't fight. But he could have fought a lot of them on these lists, okay? Uh, a fighter, oh, two fighters I want to compare him to. Now, first off, okay, Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley. Now, De La Hoya turned pro in 1993. No, no, no. 1992, and Shane Mosley turned pro in 93. Floyd, 1996. Let's just imagine, uh, just that we only need a tiny bit of imagination for this one, because this all, you know, he could have fought these guys. But let's even say, you know, um, he turned pro a couple years earlier. When, when he's going through uh, Oscar's opponents, let's say he turned pro the same year as Oscar, 92. But he's still the same fighter, like he would have been born a little earlier. You get what I'm saying? And uh, when it's compared to Shane Mosley's resume, he would have been, he would have turned pro in 93 and still been born a little earlier, but been the same Floyd. All right, let's start with Oscar De La Hoya's resume. Okay, um, you know, he had a lot of tough guys. Uh, De La Hoya was the first one to beat uh, Gennaro Hernandez. Floyd did it too, even though it was at the end of his career. Uh, Oscar had John John Molina, who fought a lot of tough guys, but was never able to really beat any type of elite fighters. Uh, he beat like a prime Ben Tacky, uh, Manuel Medina, if you remember him uh, from the 90s. Remember he was an awkward ass fighting style. Um, okay, here we go though. In his Oscars 22nd fight, he took on uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, who was 96 and 1. Um, this would have been in 1996, not far removed from the Meldrick Taylor fight, but it's not prime uh, Chavez either. Now, you got to remember here, uh, this would have been his 22nd fight. In Floyd's 22nd fight, he hadn't even fought. Emmanuel Augustus yet, um, and it would have been a couple of more years before he fought uh, Castillo, and the fight would have also taken place at 140 pounds, okay? Now, he would have had time to gain that weight, remember. Um, could he have beaten that Chavez, if he was basically beaten by Castillo a couple of years, you know, uh, later in terms, like he would have had more time to gain experience. Um, he would have been fed, if this was Floyd's career, you know, he would have been fed Chavez um, before he even fought Emmanuel Augustus. Could he have beat Chavez? How could he have kept Chavez off of him? Don't forget, 
Oscar was a knockout puncher. A fast as his hands were so fast and so deadly. You know, Floyd's hands were fast, but they weren't deadly. Uh, I don't think he would have won. I, I don't necessarily. I mean, actually, when you watch the the Castillo fight, I mean, I'll just say I think Chavez would have beat him by a decision, at least, at least. Um, you know, it's and that's not even prime Chavez. So anyone who thinks Floyd beats a prime Chavez, it, you're you're crazy. You know, if the guy couldn't even beat Castillo, uh, how is he gonna beat Chavez, an older Chavez? Because an older Chavez is still better than the Castillo he fought. The Chavez that De La Hoya fought was better than the Castillo that Floyd fought. And he would have had to have done it earlier. Okay? And remember, he had trouble with 135 pound um, Castillo and complained that Aaron was moving him along too fast. That Castillo was too big of a step for him, but how would have he? How would he have fared against, you know, the Mexican legend Chavez? I mean, I'm sorry, he was in a lot of duress in that Castillo fight, and that's Castillo. You know, Chavez could cut that ring off and march right after you, rack your body. You thought Castillo was doing good body work, and then coming upstairs, imagine what Chavez would have done to him. You know. In my book, that's one loss already. You count your own losses and tell me how many you think you would add. Uh, the next great fighter would have been Pernell Whitaker. This would have been at welterweight. Uh, again, an aging Pernell Whitaker, no longer in his prime, but he was able to give a prime De La Hoya all he could handle. And most think that Pernell won that fight. Now... If you've seen the way, you know, Floyd fought a shot De La Hoya, then you should understand that he could have never beaten a prime De La Hoya. Um, so, you know, what would, if this guy could beat a prime De La Hoya, even though he was over the hill, you know, how's, how's Floyd going to handle him? Uh, to me, that's already two losses. You know, then you have Hector Camacho. Um, I thought, uh, yeah, you know, Flo Floyd would have beat Hector Camacho at this stage in his career. Then, um, next big one is the Chavez. He would have had to have rematched Chavez Sr. when Chavez had just won, um, what was it? Nine fights in a row. Um,. Six fight. He he lost to De La Hoya, then fought six fights in a row, won them all, um, then had a rematch with De La Hoya, and De La Hoya uh, stopped him like the eighth round. Um, Floyd might have been able to get out on that Chavez. He would have fought him once, uh, had some experience. You know, he would have known what it was like. Um, so I'll give him a pass on that one. I'll say he would have decisioned Chavez on that. So he got two losses. Uh, Ike Corte, right after Chavez. In there with Ike Corte. Um, hmm, that's a toughie. You know, one thing that is a weakness of Floyd's is a great jab. Damn, did Ike Corte have a tremendous jab. Ah, uh, man. Could Floyd have beaten a prime Ike Corte? Um. Mm, man, oh man. You know what? I think I'll give that one to Floyd, even though Corte could have beaten uh, Floyd. You know, I, actually, no, man. I don't think I can. You know, this is prime Ike Corte. Um, you know, that, he gave De La Hoya his hardest fight at that point in uh, De La Hoya's career. Um, no. 
I, I actually can't see Floyd beating a prime Corte. Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't. Let me know what you think, though. Remember, keep your tab. Keep your tally. Uh, that is three losses for me. Uh, Tito Trinidad. Ooh, that's a toughie. Undefeated welterweight, 35-0, and 0, Felix Trinidad. Um, I'd have to say Floyd beats him. I'd have to say Floyd beats him because, well, it's sketchy because Floyd wouldn't really have the power to keep uh, Trinidad off of him or hurt Trinidad. Uh, and De La Hoya did, but, and, but De La Hoya beat him by outboxing him also, though. Uh, well, he lost, but he kind he really won the fight. Um, hmm. I'll give Floyd a pass on that, and I'll say he could have beat him, even though that's a 50-50 fight. You know, that is, that's a 50-50 fight, man. Uh, it really is. Uh, then you have prime, prime welterweight Shane Mosley on PEDs. All right, you got to add that in there. This is the same guys that Shane fought, and this is when Floyd was on his, or Shane was on his PEDs. Um, could he have done it? No, I think Shane would have got him. I do. I think Shane would have got him. Uh, I think he would have probably knocked him out, too, actually. I do. Um, this ain't the shot Shane Mosley. This is, you know, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter on the planet Earth, Shane Mosley. You know, well, I think maybe Roy Jones uh, had the title at the time, but it was like him and Shane Mosley, man. So Shane might have been actually the pound for pound champ at this point, because I know he was one pound for pound number one for a little while there. Uh, no, I do not think he could have beat prime Shane Mosley on PEDs. No way in hell. You can't hurt him. He could not have hurt him. Shane's hands were just as fast, if not faster. Uh, he hit like a um, fucking mule. Um, had good footwork. No, no. So that's three losses. Um, did I say? Is that three losses for me? One, two. Yeah, that's three losses. Um,. Arturo Gotti, yes, Floyd with a dog dome. Um, Fernando Vargas at 154 pounds on steroids. Okay, this ain't going to be a weight-drained junior middleweight. This ain't, you know, Canelo at 152. And don't, you guys, if you don't know Fernando Vargas, if you're new school, Fernando could box. He could fight. And he could box. Uh, he would have been a lot stronger than Floyd. Um, Floyd would have been a lot faster. But, uh, you know, Floyd or, or, or Vargas actually outboxed faster guys than himself before. Not faster than Floyd. But that would have been a toughie. That would have been. Um, he could have just... You know, worked right behind that jab. He had a beautiful jab, worked behind that jab, kept cracking that left hook off, and get Floyd to the ropes and bang on him. Um, you know, that's, that's you know, not prime Fernando, but not far out of his prime either. And he was on a shit ton of PEDs and got caught for it. So, um, <clears throat> you know, De La Hoya was able to hit him with that left hook and knock him out in the 11th round. But, again, Oscar's a different animal. Oscar has knockout power. He was a knockout artist. You know, <coughs> Shane, or Floyd wouldn't have been able to keep these type of guys off of him. Um, that Fernando Vargas, man... I don't know. I'm going to just call that a 50-50. Uh, I guess 
either guy could have won that fight. Um, man, but knowing what I know now that Sh that Vargas was on PEDs, he probably weighed like 165 pounds. He was rock solid. Nah, Floyd, I'm sorry, Floyd was not beating him. He wasn't. He would have came into that fight like 155 pounds and got fucked up. Um, then, Shane Mosley again. Uh, you know, he just came off of his uh, losses to uh, Vernon Forrest or Winky Wright. I can't remember. Uh, but he still gave a hell of a performance. Um against uh, Oscar De La Hoya. He actually technically lost, but most people thought he won. So, And he was on PEDs again. So I still think that that Shane would have beat Floyd as well. Um, that's a 2003 Shane Mosley. Uh, yes, he would have beat him. Um, what is that now? Five losses? Felix Sturm at middleweight. Remember, Oscar started at 132, just like Floyd. So it's not asking much for Floyd to jump up to 160, man. You know, it happened quite often. Uh, Felix Sturm. Yeah, Floyd would have got out on him. Uh, it would have been a tough fight, but I think he could have done it. Uh, B-Hop at middleweight. No way in hell. Um, so that's six losses. Ricardo Mayorga. Um, yeah, you'd have clearly beat uh, Ricardo Mayorga. Um, Floyd Mayweather, so we take him out. Um, and Steve Forbes, of course, Floyd beats. And then a 2008 welterweight Manny Pacquiao. Uh, the one he never wanted to fight. You know, the one who actually was throwing 900 punches on average a fight instead of the 600 punches a fight he's throwing now. Uh, so, yeah. That is, what, seven losses? And De La Hoya had six with that exact same uh, resume, you know? If you can't remember what I talked about, it go back to Box Rec, uh, look up the list, and think which one of those guys uh, could have would have beat Floyd. And remember, Floyd would have been born a little bit earlier, but he still would have been the same fighter, just coming up a little earlier. Because now we're dealing with the same era of fighters. All right, uh, let's jump over to Sugar Shane Mosley. Oh, how long I've been going here? Okay. I I'll hurry this one up. Sugar Sane Mosley. We will start with all right, Floyd Mayweather up against a prime welterweight Oscar De La Hoya. My opinion is yes, prime De La Hoya beats him every time. Uh, Antonio Diaz, Shannon Taylor. Oh! Prime, undefeated, Vernon Forrest in back-to-back -back fights. Now, that's one of the guys that Floyd avoided like the plague because he knew he would have gotten schooled. Uh, you know, Vernon wasn't flashy, but he had a jab from hell, a one-two from hell. Uh, he, he was, Floyd wanted no parts of Vernon Forrest. Um, he would have lost both of those fights, no doubt in my mind. Um, then comes back to Oscar De La Hoya again, um, this time at 154 pounds. Um, oh, and yeah, that other that second Shane fight would have been at 154 pounds too when he was going through Oscar's gauntlet. So yeah, he definitely would have lost that one. Uh, 154 pound Shane on roids, yeah, no way now. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, you know, 154 pounds in his prime. Uh, yeah, no. He's beaten Floyd again. Oh, and then look at this one. Uh, Winky Wright. Okay, Winky Wright at 154. Back to back. Winky Wright, then Winky Wright again. 
Uh, he loses them both, and I'll tell you why. Uh, that fight almost happened, Floyd and Winky, right? But Floyd uh, would only fight Winky if he agreed to enter the ring at 154 pounds. So he was all he was he won at the same day weigh in with a no rehydration uh, clause allowed. Winky obviously wouldn't do it. He was like, "Are you crazy? You know, just fight me or not, dude. Like, why? You know, what's the point?" Um, so yeah, uh, Oscar or, or Floyd already knew he couldn't beat a hundred and fifty-four pound uh, Wingy right if he rehydrated. So of course he loses both of those fights. Plus, he could have never even broke through Winky's defense or hurt him, and Winky would have just walked him down and kept sticking him with that one, two, three all night long. So that's. Two more back-to-back -back losses. Um, then you got a bunch of easy guys. Um, then you got uh, Fernando Vargas at 154 pounds. We all remember the Vargas that fought uh, Shane Mosley. Um, you know, between the two of them, Vargas might have been able to get a win uh, one of them, maybe, uh, but we'll, we'll just say, um, we'll give him the pass on these ones since last time it was a hard decision, and we'll even say he beats them both times, even though I kind of doubted he would have, uh, but we'll, we'll say he don't. Oh, then look at this, undefeated, prime. Miguel Cotto, 30-0 and 0, Miguel Cotto, uh, the one that he fucking retired to avoid. Um, after seeing how much trouble he had with uh, completely over the hill, um, uh, Miguel Cotto, uh, and winning that fight on... Uh, 115, 113 was my scorecard for that fight, and mostly everyone else's uh, that I know had it 115, 113 for Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I think Cotto would have had a little bit more in the tank and would have been able to pull out a close decision and uh, get him in his prime. You know, remember, keep your own tally. Uh oh, here we come. Another guy he avoided. Antonio Margarito. Um, we know Floyd never wanted to fight Margarito. Uh, basically, blatantly ducked Margarito. So how can we say he could beat Margarito when... Um, and this is a 2009 uh, Margarito. Just because Shane beat him don't mean anything, you know, uh, Floyd wouldn't have been able to hurt him at all, at all, Shane is a different animal, uh, Margarito clearly beats Floyd Mayweather in 2009, um, then Floyd Mayweather himself, Sergio Mora, then Manny Pacquiao in 2011, ooh, the other year that that fight should have happened, um, and yeah, I mean, I give him that one. It's up to you, though. You can keep your own tally and let me know what you have. Uh, if you need to go back and go over their box recs, their uh, resume of Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley and run Floyd through the gauntlet that they went through and tell me how many wins and losses you, or, or losses you think he would have. Um, and from that point on, he beats everybody else. So he had, holy shit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fucking losses, by my opinion, on the same... Oh, and look at that. That's how many losses Shane Mosley had. All right, so, I mean, come on. I mean, best case scenario, best in the world, is you can cut that down to five. Five losses. I mean... Eh. What's special about what's special about him then? 
You know, he would have been a damn good fighter who actually took challenges, and his resume and legacy would have meant a lot more than 47-0, and but a pretty much hollow career who's... It, it doesn't have one... It, Floyd's resume doesn't have one A-level fighter in their prime at their best weight when he fought them. That's not an all-time great resume. That's a pretty pathetic resume, especially for someone who claims they're the best of even this generation, which he's not even the best of this generation. Uh, you know, B-Hop's better than him from this generation. You know, Manny Pacquiao is an overall more talented fighter and accomplished more in this generation. I mean, then you can go back to, you know, uh, Ray Robinson, or not Ray Robinson, uh, Roy Jones, and then Ray Leonard, and Hagler, and Hearns, and Duran, and uh, Chavez Sr. All those guys are better. You know, so from every generation, there's better fighters than Floyd, man. He ain't even the best of his own generation. Uh... You know, I have them getting beat. How many times did I say on De La Hoya's resume? It was like one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> what did I say? Six or seven? And nine? Uh, and let me know what you think. Because this is a way you can compare how great you really think he is. On, um... You know, current fighters' resumes. Guys he could have fought, some he did fight. Uh, most he avoided, though. Um, you know, like, go through their, go through Shane's uh, resume, and, you know, see who you think Floyd would have lost to, if anybody. Uh, and the same with Oscar. You know, run Floyd through their gauntlets and see what would have happened. And remember, he's fighting the same people that they fought the night they fought him. He would have just been born a little bit earlier and turned pro when they did, you know. So if Oscar's fight in Chavez Sr. in his 22nd fight, uh, Floyd would have been born a few years earlier and fighting Chavez Sr. in his 22nd fight as well. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think it pretty much proves that he's just, you know, your average good fighter. And that's what he is, you know, an average great fighter, uh, even that. But no, you know, you, you you compare him to, you know, a Sugar Ray Leonard, and they're like, that's a different era. Well, this ain't a different era, all right? And these guys both started one at 135 and one at 130, you know. And the guy who started at 130 goes the whole way up to middleweight to challenge himself. And that's why Oscar's legacy is the best, um, or not legacy, his resume is the best of all modern fighters, um, hands down. Uh, but, you know, the only one that can compare with him legacy-wise, or resume-wise, is Manny Pacquiao. Um, you know, but I'd have to put uh, Oscar's resume above Manny Pacquiao's resume. Then Shane Mosley's resume, and then Floyd Floyd Mayweather's resume. But Floyd, I don't know some other. You know Bernard Hopkins uh, obviously is up there before him. There's plenty of other fighters before him. His resume is. I'm not. I'm not even getting into where it's at. It's just nowhere near the top. Um, so like I said, let me know what you guys think and go through their records and have Floyd run those gauntlets. And tell me how many losses with Shane's record and how many losses with Oscar's record. And uh, whatever little thoughts you want to throw in. All right, Thunder No Boxing Talk. Stay safe and peace.